Good evening, good evening. Hope everyone is doing well. Let me make sure that, uh, looks like I'm a little weak going out. There we go. It's a little better. Anywho, it wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> Hope everybody is doing well. I, um, man, has it been a crazy day today. I want to, uh, I want to show people once again about leading by example. Um, I come down on the preparedness community quite hard when it comes to the notion of just, and I often joke and say, crawl in their hole with their box of crackers. And I just do that because it sounds, to me it sounds funny anyway. And I personally think that is the absolute worst mindset to have. I want to talk a little bit about first responders. Not really in depth or anything, but we all rely on first responders, right? Especially law enforcement. If there's something going on, if there's a danger, we're supposed to rely on them to head towards that danger. And yeah, we can absolutely question that. But there's something that we can't question. Our, our fire, you know, whether you have a, um, whether you have, we have volunteer fire department here, whether you have the volunteer, whether you have a, you know, on staff fire department. Either way, we can pretty well rely on them to run towards the danger. And we don't have to ever second guess that. And we are very thankful for those individuals for doing that. It's the right thing to do. The military. Another case of which individuals that will run towards danger to protect the lives of others. So I don't understand the whole preparedness logic of crawling in your hole with your box of crackers and shutting everybody out and running away. I don't get it. Well, we have something that's going on here locally in our town, and as a matter of fact, it has to do with the first responders, directly has to do with the first responders. And what I want to do is talk to you a little bit about what's going on, and I want to tell you how I'm trying to lead by example, what I'm trying to do to at least be a cog in the machine to help get this, this machine fixed, because this machine is clearly very broken at this point. So, um, we have an issue going on in this town, and it's not necessarily new. Uh, it's been going on for a little while, in which, um, not the best decisions are being made. Definitely not decisions that are more in the interest of, of the, the residents. And again, this goes back some time. My, my big first um, complaint would have to do with our have to do with our pavilion on our town square. We used to have, we are a, a Swedish-German town. We used to have a, a gorgeous pavilion. And I wished I had a picture of it to show you. We used to have a gorgeous pavilion up on the square. And, uh, you know, after time and a bunch of hooligans like myself and my friends that used to hang up there, uh, it fell in some disrepair. It needed some help. And... I mean, we didn't really do that much to it. It, it. it was old and needed it needed help. And as I recall, and if I recall this correctly, uh, the individuals in town, there was, a, you know, two ways they could go. They could rehab the pavilion that was there, or they could level it and start from scratch. From my understanding, the people of the town preferred to rehab what we had. And I mean, it was, you know, it had bathrooms down underneath and stuff like that. Well, that's not what happened. They wound up completely redoing the square. And um, 
and they put this this bandstand thing up that is much smaller and just looks stupid. I mean, absolutely, in my opinion, looks stupid. Definitely not the gorgeous structure that was there prior to that. Well, then other decisions were made about the town. Uh, we wound up getting some roundabouts in town. Nobody wanted those, but they got those crammed down their, their throats. And it's just been a continuation of poor leadership. And enough is enough. Well, here recently, uh, they had built the town had put up, uh, built a new uh, municipal building, fire department, police station, new communications department. And then they turned around and handed over the communications, the 911 dispatch and all of that, to the county. Mind you, they told the people of the town that they did not have a choice. They, and, and I've seen... Everybody involved in this keeps pointing the finger at everybody else. No, nobody will own whose decision it really was. And I, I think we're getting down to whose it really was. Well, and that, that's frustrating because I think I saw somebody make the comment of something like it was like $7 million or something like that for that building that they put in. And now, you know, we... It's in, it's just, it's insane. It is absolutely insane. So, the latest, and, and I mentioned the trash service, which is, that's, that's nothing. That's peanuts compared to all the rest of this. But even the trash service uh, has changed and gotten crammed down our throats, and I, I'm pretty sure that the citizens of, of our town still do not know all the ins and outs of that whole change there, and I think that we're going to be finding out soon enough. Well, now the latest is, and I actually brought up the, um, the town's website uh, because now... <laughs> I told this story. Let me briefly go through it. We had two town... or two... Facebook groups for this town. One of them was kind of liberal, you know, liberal sided, and the other one was very conservative sided. And if you didn't toe the line, you got booted out. And I don't believe in that. So, like, I don't know, two, maybe three, might be going on three, I don't know. Two to three years ago, I started my own group for the town. And we don't play that. People have a right to speak. And I, I will defend their right to speak. There's only been one thing that I have even ever been remotely hypocritical about. And that was all this whole um, drag queen nonsense. Because I guess there's some, some towns local or something that's got that stuff in their town and whatever. I'm not. Like And like I said at the time, hey, if we can't get something solid about the kids when it comes to all of that nonsense, then no, I am not going to be a party to that, no. And you could argue that that's being hypocritical, and I'll accept that argument. doesn't change my mind, but I'll accept that argument. Okay, I'm a hypocrite when it comes to that. I'm, I'm fine with that. But everything else is open. And so, somebody had posted, was this the original one here? Yeah, and it was, uh, it was this morning, somebody had posted anonymously in the group, I will add, a, uh, a post about our town getting ready to lay off the first responders. And, um, of course, the dispatchers have already been laid off because they handed that over to the county. And now, it looks like some of our EMS is, is being laid off. And if I'm understanding this correctly, they're going to be going down from two ambulances down to one. 
if I'm understanding this correctly. Um, this is nonsense. And so there has been quite a stir on our Facebook page about this. And, uh, and since then, there had been a couple other people make posts to the same effect. Well, the next thing you know, I got an email and a ding on my phone from the city app. And uh, so they had this that they put out. This is our town's website here. Let me have a sip of coffee before I start reading this. I was kind of rushing right up to the uh, <laughs> right up to the end of the intro, actually. Okay, it says as this Highland Area EMS information sheet it says this information sheet has been prepared in cooperation with the trustees of the respective fire protection districts and officials from the city of Highland. Now, mind you, this didn't come out until there was a stink raised in the Facebook group. I don't know for sure if they were going to release this information or at least maybe not this soon or I have no idea. But it says effective May 1, 2024, Highland EMS will no longer be serving St. Jacob Fire Protection District, Marine Fire Protection District, Highland Piron Fire Protection District, and Grant Fork Fire Protection District. We used to cover all of those. Those districts will be served by the Alhambra Hamel Ambulance Service with a truck being stationed within the borders of the Highland Piron Fire Protection District. Highland EMS will be going to one full-time staffed ambulance from the current two ambulances and will be solely focused on emergency response for Highland citizens. The special service area that serves St. Rose Fire Protection District has a contract with Highland, Highland EMS through December 31, 2024, but has requested the option to join with an alternate service provider if it makes economic and operational sense for the district. The districts in the city of Highland understand that citizens will have questions and will be concerned about the change in this service. The districts and the city are committed to providing our citizens with immediate and quality care when there is a need for emergency medical services. We, the trustees of the fire protection districts and the elected officials of the city of Highland are all residents as well. Yeah. So when we make changes to, this, to the services, we are making changes for our families as well. Yeah. We are committed to doing everything we possibly can to meet the standards of service our residents have come to expect while taking into account the economic realities impacting our EMS services. The questions and answers below are intended to help explain why these operational changes are happening. For specific questions regarding your district, please contact and they've got the relevant numbers there says um, how is the service currently organized it says currently the city of Highland owns the EMS service and provides EMS service to the five fire protection districts through the through contracts for service this has been the arrangement for many years with the five districts St. Jacob Marine Highland Piron Grant Fork and St. Rose each year the city would send contracts to the districts with requested levy amounts to fund the EMS service the fire protection districts would levy the funds and then would make annual payments to the city for the service. The city of Highland also has its own tax levy for EMS services, which is capped by the state statute at 0.25%. What's happening with the service? As we saw with our neighbors in Pocahontas, federal policy decisions regarding Medicare and Medicaid reimbursements have made it very difficult for EMS services to, uh, to cash flow. Highland is no different. The city has subsidized the EMS service for several years, exhausting the reserves of the EMS department. This is not an issue unique to Highland, rather this is a nationwide issue that has caused many government-funded EMS services to consolidate 
reduce services or contra contract the service out to private entities. These are always difficult decisions that are rarely made voluntarily. Most often, the governmental agencies are forced into those decisions because of financial difficulty. EMS services in Illinois have additionally been impacted with increased operating costs due to inflation for equipment and apparatus and the increases in minimum wage, which have significantly impacted starting wages for these positions. This is how is EMS funded. Highland EMS is operated as a hybrid government fund and enterprise. That means it is supported both from property taxes and from fees for services. Highland EMS specifically has traditionally been funded with about half of the necessary operating cash coming from property taxes collected from the City of Highland and the Fire Protection Districts, and about half of the operating cash coming from fees for services for the calls they respond to. In this business model, if the operating expenses exceed the revenue from property taxes or fees for services, the City of Highland is responsible for covering the operating loss. Now, mind you, and I have to bring this up. Have to bring this up. I, I can't ignore it. We were being handed a golden ticket. And we didn't take it. Because we got idiots running this town. We had the opportunity to put in a dispensary, marijuana dispensary, whether you're for or against it, hear me out. That would have brought in a flood of revenue. This town would have had more revenue than what they would have known what to do with. But because of a bunch of reefer madness idiots that are on the town's board and in the town's payment system, no. And now, our town is suffering. These people talking about how their families are impacted too. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sure. Sure. You're not impacted like many of the elderly or many of the disabled. You know, that don't have their own ways to the hospital. Not impacted like that, now are you? It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And I know one thing. I know one thing. The people that are currently in charge, I hope that they're really, you know, enjoying it. Because the tables are about to turn. That's a fact. Let me, uh, I really don't need to read all of this. It's not, you know, let me, let me kind of scroll through the areas for anybody that's that interested in it. And, uh, you know, that way you can pause it if you wish. And you can read it all. Because I don't want to deny anybody from... If they want to read it. And, and one of the major reasons why. Is because I have a feeling. That this is not something. That's going to be just to our town. I think that we're seeing some. Changes that are made throughout. And let me explain why. The whole idea. Behind this consolidation. Of everything. Especially the police forces. Especially the telecommunication centers. It is literally, and people can roll their eyes all they want, it is a literal part, it is a model of Agenda 21 and Agenda 2030. You can go look it up. It is all part of it. Even the damn roundabouts that got stuffed down our throats in town. That is absolutely 100% another part of Agenda 21 and or Agenda 2030, whichever you choose. So, what am I going to do? Well, I'm, I'm just one guy with absolutely no power, 
and not a whole lot of respect. But I can damn well make those tables turn and that's exactly what I'm going to do. Uh, the group will be able to use the group to communicate. The group was actually started by a prior page called the Highland Patriots that I started back in 2012. And so we're going to start becoming active on the Highland Patriots page. And the reason why we're going to do that, as well as, you know, the, everything's going to stay the same with the group. Um, the reason for the page, though, is because the only people that can post to the page are the admins of the page. And so that's a much easier way to keep things organized and for people to get information more quickly and efficiently. That way I ain't scrolling for days through group posts. As well as, I added a subdomain to the Watchman News today. And uh, I added uh, the subdomain as highland.thewatchmannews.com. And I just got the script installed today. I just... I just got started. I haven't really gotten much of anything done yet. But as you can see, I got the banner up there. I um, got a background. and So that is our backup. So if there's pressure put on, say, social media, naming, you know, meaning Facebook, uh, and we wind up losing our Facebook group and or our page, this is the backup. So, uh, and I pretty much plan to have anything that's in the page, you know, on the page or in the group or anything like that. I plan to have it here as well, so people can go either way. Um, I cannot stress enough about leading by example. Hey, I don't want to be doing this, man. This is gonna cause, pardon the language, but this is gonna cause a shit storm. And I'm probably going to wind up facing and dealing with a whole lot of crap as a result of this. Mind you, mind you, just for reporting a drunk driver that hit a tenant's car and left, a, a drunk hit and run, I dealt with harassment from the police department for a year and a half, which I can prove I still... I still have the evidence of that harassment. By the way, a little caveat, the main police officer that was involved in that harassment is the current city manager. Imagine that. Imagine that. So the only thing that we can do in a legal and a calm manner. You know, not going to go kill dozer on the people. No. That ain't the way to deal with this. We're going to deal with this the correct political legislative way. I was in conversation. I'm not going to identify the person. I was in conversation with somebody that I went to school with. Another member of the community this morning. And we were talking about the city elections and what have you. And one of the positions that we were talking about, one of the board member positions, the guy that won, won with some 600 some odd votes. We're a town of just roughly 10,000 people. So out of just roughly 10,000 people, some... 600 or so decided to go and vote. We can do better than that. But we have to get people energized and we have to get, get them motivated to do so. We're damn well going to do our best to do that. We're going to use the examples of what's going on in this town as to why people need to get out and vote. I am absolutely willing to dig anything and everything I can up 
about the current board members or potential future board members. So that instead of it being a battle of who's got more money or who's got more popularity, it's a more, much more honest election. And if there's anything you should know about me from here, I don't play games with anybody. I don't sell out to anybody. And I'm damn sure not afraid to ask the hard questions. I'm damn sure not afraid to press somebody up against the wall. Lead by example. Even if it means getting involved in your local elections. And I, you should know from coming here, I'm the last person to be beaten on the election bell. But local government, you absolutely can have an effect in local government. I'll still argue whether or not you can in federal government. But local, absolutely you can. Somebody commented about, you know, who counts the votes. And my I'll stand there with my damn DJI Pocket 2 recording in 4K. The vote count if I need to. We can fix this. But like with any other government, it's just, it's a process. And it never happens as quickly as we want it to. But if you stick with it, if you stick on it, you can make it happen. And I don't, I still don't have all the details to how this all works. I, I, um, I believe there's a seat, a board seat coming up in April. So, apparently it's not something where like every two years or every four, you know, I guess it's not like that. I still have more information to find out. I'm, I am certainly not Mr. Civics 101. <laughs> I know how the system is supposed to work, but I don't know the intricacies. And that I will be learning with the help of other members of the community. Lead by example. And don't go running away. Don't go running away. And that includes the big SHTF as well. Find out where you can chip in and help out. Find the need and fill it. People in your community depend on that. And we are far far from the only community that's gotten corrupted. I think just about every damn community from ocean to ocean has had its share of corruption. But mark my words, it's coming to an end here. It's coming to an end. All I can say is when it comes to city board members, you either start making decisions for the citizens of this town or you will be voted out. And those decisions start with removing the corruption that is in our city. I only mentioned one position. There's other positions as well. I can't remember the name of the position, the title of the position. There was another one that was brought up to me today. I've got the name in front of me. I'm not going to repeat that name. I'm not going to repeat either name, whether the city manager, which I'll give you that pos position, that one. I hope he's enjoying it. I hope he's enjoying it. And I'll repeat myself, if you're a member of the city board, you either start making decisions for the citizens of this town, or we'll see you at election time. 